On New Year's Day, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un told his countrymen that the nation was on the verge of testing an intercontinental ballistic missile, one believed to be capable of hitting mainland America. This comes after the rogue nation conducted two nuclear tests in 2016. Sources say Kim is determined to develop a nuclear weapon before 2017 is out. China and South Korea have both denounced the ICBM test plans, and Donald Trump tweeted the following. North Korea just stated that it is in the final stages of developing a nuclear weapon capable of reaching parts of the U.S. It won't happen. What could he do? Joining me here in New York is Joe Serenciani, president of the non-proliferation advocacy group, the Plowshares Fund, and Victor Cha was director of Asian Affairs on the George W. Bush National Security Council. He joins us from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, where he is the Korea chair. Joe, let me start with you. What do you make of, of North Korean capabilities and Kim Jong-un's threat slash boast slash promise? Well, fortunately, they're not there yet, but they could be if they keep working at it. They have short-range missiles that can hit South Korea and Japan, including hitting our 30,000 U.S. troops that are there. Can they put a nuclear warhead on those missiles? The State Department says no, not yet. I hope they're right. But after five tests, historically, most countries have perfected the technique with pretty advanced design. North Korea has five tests. If they can put a nuclear tip on those short-range missiles, they can certainly deter us from taking military action against them. What they're trying to do is hit the continental United States. Much tougher, much more difficult. But we believe he's going to test something that's called the KNO-8, a missile we've seen in parades, but has not yet been tested. Will it work the first time? Probably not. But you keep testing, you'll be able to do this. If he works at it in two or three years, almost, it's very likely he'll have the capability to hit Los Angeles, San Francisco, or New York. Victor, how should one take these threats? I mean, how serious are they? This guy, at, at one level, seems crazy. At another level, it seems, you know, crazy enough to do something like this. Well, I think we have to take him very seriously, Fareed. Um, I know there is a tendency to ridicule the North Korean leadership and to look at what they say and just think of them as meaningless boasts. But uh, as Joe said, the level of testing we've seen over the last uh, eight years has been incredible. They've done 65 mm. missile and nuclear tests over the last eight years compared with 17 in the previous 14 years. So this is not just boasting. This is a military testing program designed to achieve the objective that Joe just described, which is a nuclear-tipped ICBM that can reach the United States. The purpose of that is to hold the United States hostage um, so that we would not be able to defend our allies and North Korea would be at liberty then to coerce our allies in the region through all sorts of threats and other sorts of activities. So I think we have to take this very seriously. We do not want to be in a situation where the incoming administration will be uh, the administration that will be remembered for allowing a country like North Korea, the most opaque country in the world, to have achieved a nuclear-tipped ICBM that can hit the United States. My, my understanding, Joe, is that in that conversation that President Obama had with President-elect Trump, there was a part of it that was particularly se secret and sensitive mm -hmm. that even Trump alluded to, and it was precisely about North Korea. And my sense is that what Obama told Trump is very similar to what Victor Char just said. But you think that the Obama strategy uh, toward North Korea has itself also failed? It has. Now, George W. Bush tried to get them not to go nuclear. He failed. They tested during in 2006. Obama tried to stop them by putting on more sanctions and refusing to talk to them. That failed miserably. They increased their capability. So now we're in a situation where the incoming president is likely to be tested on this issue in the first few months. The U.S. and South Korea have major military exercises in February and March coming up. Those always wild the North Koreans. Is that when they might test it? When that might they do another uh, incident? And so the, the president is going to be faced with either trying to take a military action to stop them from testing, going with the policy of crippling sanctions, which has failed, or doing something he said he's willing to do, reach out and negotiate with Kim Jong-un. And you think the, the third is the, is the right path? I think it's the only way to go, a, a coercive dip diplomatic uh, approach, one that threatens sanctions, 
puts on more sanctions, but also reaches out to engage North Korea to try and arrest their program, freeze it where it is. Victor Cha, what do you think of that? You have to talk to the North Koreans, nothing else has worked. Well, well, first on sanctions, uh, we have to remember with sanctions, we always say they don't work until they work. So in other <laughs> words, we can apply the sanctions and if they come back to the table, we'll say, oh, they worked. But until they come back to the table, we'll say they failed. So in terms of sanctions, there are two things to note. The first is we have these two new elements of sanctioning. One are the commitment by the Chinese to reduce coal imports from North Korea, which provide them with a lot of hard currency that they could use for their nuclear program. And the other is these new Treasury financial sanctions, the so-called Section 311 sanction against the entire jurisdiction of North Korea. In terms of the history of sanctioning, these two things are at a new level, and they've just started. So we have to allow those uh, to take effect and see if they have any sort of impact. Joe, before we go, I want to ask you, you pointed something out to me which I didn't quite think about. The United States right now is on maximum nuclear alert. Um, you say before uh, Obama leaves office, this should change. Explain what and why. We have about a thousand warheads on missiles on what's called high alert status. It's something we've been doing since the Cold War. When the Cold War is over, we still have these weapons on high alert. Why? This is, makes these missiles prone to accident, miscalculation, um, a, a, a computer chip going bad could tr trigger a nuclear war. It's time for the United States to stand down these missiles, not take them apart, just take them off high alert and see if uh, Vladimir Putin can be convinced to do the same thing. That one step could make the world a whole lot safer. And that might be a deal that appeals to the president-elect. Could be. Thank you both very much.